With the draft coming up and us being in that third, fourth wave of free agency, should the Ravens focus more now on the wide receiver position or the offensive line? Should the Baltimore Ravens consider drafting LSU wide receiver Terrace Marshall at pick 27 in the first round? What's another issue with the Baltimore Ravens that no one is talking about? These and many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Don't get mad, uh -huh. it's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports, shot out in Graven Vans. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Sam Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers uh, what questions from subscribers is it's a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team and we answer it in a video just like this now if you want the opportunity to be part of NFL questions from subscribers you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com and we'll possibly answer your question in a video just like this I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. We have very, very special Today guests on this episode of NFL questions from subscribers. We are joined by the fellas from lunch break hot take. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, let them know where they can find you at. Uh, and we're going to get into why you do what you do. So cool. let them know about lunch break hot take team. Keep it clean. What's going on? This is the lunch break hot take. I am Jose. I'm Bradley. And you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at LBHT Show. You can also check out our website, lbhtshow.com. We write articles. We post our uh, podcast on there. And, you know, if you want to get a little merch, you know, you can get some merch from the, from the store on there. All right. And, of course, on YouTube, Lunch Break Hot Take, where every Wednesday night at, at 7 p.m., we do a live show. We do a live Ravens talk. B's a Panthers fan. We do Panthers talk. And also UFC boxing, a little bit NBA. Cool, cool. Now, how, how did y'all get started with this whole podcasting and just talking uh, NFL and sports in general and UFC too? Well, okay. yeah, uh, to be honest, you know, we're, we're brothers. Uh, and so we talk on the phone every day, basically, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. and we would be on the phone for a couple of hours just talking sports. Yeah. And so, we, you know, we, we really just joked about it all the time. Like, oh, we start a podcast, start a podcast. And then, you know, when the whole, you know, when, when everything happened last year, I actually got laid off early in the year mm -hmm. and we were like, might as well do it now. Got the time. Yeah, <laughs> so we, yeah, just, yeah. we started doing a podcast and then, uh, you know, a few months after that, you know, everybody was like, Oh, why don't you get on YouTube, get on YouTube, do some videos and everything. So we, we started up the YouTube channel and it's just kind of growing from there. Yep. Totally. Now what's your favorite part about uh, the YouTube part of it? What's the part that you like the most about it? You know, I like the, uh, the interaction, with the yeah. uh, with the viewers because when me and B were first doing it, you know we didn't we didn't have any expectations at all mm. really right. So yeah. when we did our first live stream, there was like one person that was coming in there. In yeah. fact, I think it might have been God's Child. Shout out to God's Child. <laughs> and <laughs> and you know one day we were just kind of joking about hey you know we'll give we'll give the two people that are, that are going to come on the live stream a minute to get in here. And then there was like twenty people in there, and we're mm. like oh oh okay you know like they want to hear what we had to say. Yeah. So like that interaction you know, with people that come in there. I, I love seeing people join mm -hmm. and just, just chop it up with us, even if they leave a comment, all that stuff. Like, that's that's my favorite part of it. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Now, well, what would be your least favorite part about the YouTube part? The consistency. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you have to be consistent, right? Like, we yeah. do our homework, you know. Uh, the YouTube algorithm wants oh. you, you know, if, if, you, if you're going to put out three videos a week, stay consistent doing three videos yes. a week. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, and also take, you know, if you try to take a break, your audience is going to let you know. Right. Mm. That, that's when we, that's when we first found out that we actually had a, a, a steady audience because it yeah. was around Christmas time and we were like, okay, it's Christmas, you know, like, you know, nobody's, you know, we're, we're fine. And we didn't do anything that weekend and they were hitting us up on Instagram. They're hitting us up <laughs> on Twitter. Like, yo, where, where's the video? Where, 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 where you at? So, so, okay. Yeah. All right. We got to stay consistent with it. So, yeah, man, that, that's true. Cause with YouTube, really just anything in life period that you want to do a good job at consistency is everything, but definitely with YouTube. Cause if you're not consistent, whatever okay. your consistency is, even if it's one video a week, make sure you do that video on that day, every single week, or else yes. YouTube, they will, they will throw you away quick, man. Yes. 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 Quick, yes. faster than a heartbeat, especially because there's so many people that do the same thing, man. YouTube is just so saturated. That is, is, is hard. It's very, very hard. But yes. um, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming on. Thank you. Uh, and let's get into this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. Okay. Let's do it.
All right, first question came from Hadi. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you're doing well, my guy. A report just came out that the Falcons are open to trading their number four pick in the draft. My question is, do you give Eric DaCosta any chance to work his magic and acquire that pick uh, by trade by letting go of our right tackle Orlando Brown Jr. and some picks? Oof. Can you imagine us drafting a Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts? Much love to you, man, and team, keep it clean. Appreciate it, Hadi. I'll let y'all start off with this one. So could you see Eric DaCosta trading with the Falcons, trading Orlando Brown Jr. and some picks to acquire the Falcons' number four pick? Me, I don't see it happening, but what about y'all? Yeah, I mean, that would be the first time in history that's, that's ever happened, right, that we treated, traded up that high? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I can't see it happening. Even with Orlando Brown, I mean, Orlando Brown in the 27th, and we would probably have to give up a future first-round pick. That's probably what <clears> we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just don't see it. What about you, B? Yeah, you know, this is a topic that's kind of kind of close to my heart because there were rumors about them talking to Carolina and that number eight <laughs> pick, and I, and I do not want that to happen. So yeah. hopefully, you know, if you if you are trading up, I hope it is to number four. Uh, but like I said, I don't think DeCosta is going to be looking to move up. He mentioned, uh, you know, not long after the end of the season that they were going to be looking to acquire more picks. So I think right. they're more yeah. likely to be moving down, uh, you know, maybe out of the round, first round altogether. Then, then that kind of jump up. The next question came from Clarence. He said, I think the Ravens should focus on the offensive line more than the wide receiver position. A Jeff Saturday type center because being a center is a special skill uh, to hike the ball and to block really quick. Not an easy task to pull off. Uh, so that's the first part of his question. Uh, so I, I think they should focus on both of them. I, I don't think just because you focus on one, it rules out the other uh, because they both go hand in hand. Uh, because you say, for instance, you have a good offensive line, that could be a beautiful thing. But if your receivers aren't getting open, if they and if they dropping the ball and stuff like that, then it's it'll go to waste. Say, for instance, and even in reverse, if you have a bad offensive line, so you don't have much time. If you have a receiver that can get open quick, that can actually help you so you can get the ball off faster to them. Um, but if you can really focus on improving both. Yeah, that, that can make the offense. It can take them a long way. Uh, so how do y'all feel about the Ravens focusing on either wide receiver more or offensive line more? And if they should. Uh, for me, you know, in, in in terms of the draft, I've never wanted Baltimore to really uh, go wide receiver high just because I think they're pretty bad at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you talk about the offensive line, you know, there, there are certain guys in there. You got Creed Humphrey, you got uh, Dickerson. Uh, but I don't know that those are guys you want to take in round one. Uh, so, like you said, you can focus on both. Uh, you can take that wide receiver in round one, and, and the Ravens have shown the ability multiple times to find good offensive linemen on day two and three, and they, they kind of develop them. They've never shown that for wide receivers. So I think that, you know, personally, I think they, they should sign another veteran receiver, uh, Antonio Brown. But if they're not going to do that, go round one, hit receiver, day two focus on the o-line and and get both of those things taken care of yeah i pretty much agree with that you know uh i would say get a b and still draft that wide receiver uh <laughs> why are we so afraid to put weapons around lamar jackson he's one of the best players in the league right like why are we afraid to be great you know <laughs> get him you know go overkill on it man get him as much uh firepower as possible get him as much protection as possible mm -hmm. right me and b have a, a saying on our show Hashtag defund the defense, defense, right? And you know, basically it's just saying the defense is fine. You don't need to put any more resources into the defense. We spend all of our capital, whether it's picks, you know, money, you know, it's always on the defense side of the ball. The defense is fine. It's going to do its job. It's time to start spending money on the offense because Lamar Jackson's going to get us to the Super Bowl if we're going to win one. It's not going to be the defense. Mm. And speaking of those weapons that you spoke of, uh, the next part of his question, he said, if g Row can't integrate uh, T. Williams and Keith Martin's passing plays into his running plays, g Row is gone before the season starts. Or the coach run the risk of losing the locker room. What do you think? Um, now, g Row, he, he ain't going nowhere before the season starts. No, no, no. no. Yeah, if he was going to go anywhere, he would have been gone already because Ravens wouldn't go – into uh, what's getting ready to be the draft, what's getting ready to be training camp and all that. They wouldn't They wouldn't go into that not having an right. offensive coordinator or firing their offensive coordinator like right now or any time before the season starts. Right. Um, now, with him incorporating and integrating uh, Williams and Keith Martin, 
that's important um, because it's just going to depend on if how much those guys have a voice uh, and, and who listens to them um, to really see if we can see some significant changes. Because with Giro, uh, for me, I was somebody that I, I did want to see him going. I, I thought the Ravens should have moved on uh, after the season. But then at the same time, I can also understand why they decided to keep Giro. Because Giro with the running game, he's great at it. It's great. Uh, but the passing game definitely needs some improvements. Uh, but it's not all Giro that's the problem with the no. passing game. Lamar got to work on stuff. The receivers got to work on stuff. Offensive line got to improve. It's, it's everybody. Everybody takes blame in the uh, the Ravens' struggles in the passing game. Um, so I, I, I did understand why they kept Giro. So hopefully with uh, T. Williams, I mean with T. Martin and Keith Williams, um, they will have a significant voice and they can really help uh, upgrade this offense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And may not be before the season, but if things don't go well during the season, I could see G Road being fired, you know, a la Cam Cameron, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, no, but that's who they decided they're going to go with and they're going to implement that offense. And yes, like you said, to, you know, to G Road's credit, he wasn't working with a whole lot on offense. You have to give him a little bit more to work with before you can fully evaluate him. Mm -hmm. But in just you know my opinion, I mean, we've seen what he can do uh, with previous teams, and you know, it, it, it falls short. Let's just say that it falls short. Ultimately, I think he's going to have to be gone, maybe even Harbaugh, to be honest. But you know, look, he's here, and hopefully, it's enough. You know, what we do in the off season and adding Keith Williams to hopefully, hopefully, some more talent. And, um, you yeah, know, all we can do right now is just wait and see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when it comes to, to Greg Roman, uh, I think this is probably his last year. Uh, we, we've discussed John Harbaugh on our, our show a lot. Uh, and I say his greatest skill as a coach is uh, self-preservation. And so if he feels Ooh. like it's kind of going sideways, Giro will be out, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but it, it is going to be interesting to see if the Ravens hired T. Martin oh. and Keith Williams to really try to develop these wide receivers and, and get the pass game going, or if it was just to kind of shut people up about mm -hmm. the, the offense. Because, uh, you know, I mean, David Culley came out and, and was kind of made a few comments. Like, he didn't really have a whole lot of voice uh, mm -hmm. or a lot of influence in the pass game. Right. Uh, and, you know, and honestly, I'll push back a little bit on the, the Greg Roman run game thing, too. I mean, I know that they, they're – they're the best run team in the league, and mm -hmm. that's something that's kind of followed him around wherever he's gone. But it's to me really just that he he gets mobile quarterbacks and lets them go. You know, yeah. not not so much that he's he's a a run game wizard. It's just that he's one of the few coordinators who is willing to uh, take advantage of that particular trait in in his quarterbacks. Most teams don't do that, yeah. uh, but in Baltimore they're doing it obviously way too much. Yeah. Uh, I think the last time I looked, you know, Lamar was almost halfway to Cam, Cam Newton's career uh, carries, yeah. and he's only been in the league for three years. You know, yeah. so, I mean, that's not a long-term solution for Baltimore. Um, and, and honestly, you know, Greg Roman, he was the coordinator in San Francisco when they went to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. they, had some, they had a couple of good receivers there. They had more talent, and, you know, the pass game was fine, right? And I, so I really think that's the issue in Baltimore. They mm. haven't given him a chance, really, with the pass game because, you know, you're rolling out there with Hollywood and Miles Boykin and, you know, Devin DuVernay. And those guys, you know, they maybe they're going to be uh, solid starters down the road, but they're not that right now. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, team? Keep it clean. And shout out from Mexico. After hearing about the penalties uh, that we never talk about on one of the episodes of questions from subscribers, it made me think, what's another issue that we don't talk about enough and we're fine about it? One that has started happening after 2013 and we still haven't addressed it properly. One that still haunts us, uh, even though we don't say it loud enough. Cap space. Every year we get to restructuring contracts from players to creating space. And guess where most of the money comes from? Defense. We say the cap doesn't exist, but for us, it does. And we still haven't recovered completely from the Flacco deal. No, they, they have the Flacco deal. That got finished, I think, after last year it got finished. But anyway, he said it's hard to see so many good players go to other teams because of the cap we have. Don't get me wrong. We are a winning team, but... The players want to get paid, and we saw it painfully this offseason with wide receivers. They want money to secure their future. We always contend for the Super Bowl, but that is not enough to bring a player to your team. Even though we don't have the scheme for a passing offense in other key positions, they still don't come as easily as we want them to because of that money. 
Stay safe, stay healthy, and shout out to Carter. Appreciate it. So my guy Manuel said that Ravens have an issue with cap space. With this one, I um, I disagree. Uh, it, I don't think it's that they have an issue with cap space, but I think it's the issue, one of the issues, at least to me personally, that I feel is that they where they struggle at the most, which is at the wide receiver position. That's where they struggle at, and they've been yeah. struggling there for forever. That's where they invest the least amount of money into, and they're always looking, trying to be bargain shoppers at the wide receiver position, mm-hmm. and it just, it, it's been a struggle there for the drafting and development, the development of wide receivers. It's been a struggle there with uh, with signing wide receivers because they they just they're very cheap when it comes to signing free agent wide receivers. Yeah. Um, and, and I know a lot of people say, well, uh, you you can't you can't win the offseason or winning the offseason, not winning the Super Bowl, which I understand that. But at the same time, it's like especially where we are right now as the Baltimore Ravens, I really think that now is a time more than ever where you should really just inv- like you said earlier, you say overkill. Uh, at the wide receiver position because they've obviously put it out there that they're going to be re-signing Lamar very soon. Uh, They have this year, uh, and then they could do the fifth-year option, uh, and then even they could even franchise tag him, but regardless of – or they could re-sign him. But regardless of what route they take with Lamar Jackson when it comes to his contract, next year, if they do the fifth-year option or if they re-sign him, either way, he's going to get a significant raise. His cap number is going way up. So – this year, more than ever, especially with your window, you're, you, like, you're not in just win now mode, you're in win Super Bowl now mode. So with your window, before you got to pay Lamar, being very, very tight, very, very close, um, I say go all in and just really change that whole MO when it comes to what you do at the wide receiver position. Um, so, But I don't think it's a, it's a cap issue. I just think it's their mentality strictly at wide receiver. All the other mm-hmm. positions, like they they pay Ronnie Stanley, and they usually take care of offensive linemen, running backs. They they take care of them if you are that guy for them at running back. We know Mark Ingram; he was just a quick fix, and right. we'll see what happens with J.K. Gus Edwards. Both of their contracts run out the same year, so oh well, no, 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 not Gus Edwards yet. I, I expect them to sign him. I expect them to sign him to an extension that mm-hmm. runs out the same. Uh, year that J.K. Dobbins' contract is up. I'm over here talking about stuff that ain't even happened yet, but um. <laughs> And that tight end, you know, Ravens, they they going to pay Mark Andrews. He ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and they've taken care of their tight ends in the past, too. Um, and yeah, with quarterback, I mean, yeah. it's a small sample size because we just had – Flacco was the only franchise quarterback that they had, and they paid him. So, and you know, they they like they better not let Lamar go. No, Ooh, they better not do that. Don't even play with it. But the wide receiver is the position where everybody knows that they are consistently cheap. So yeah. – it's not that it's the cap problem. It's just that that's what the Ravens do. I let y'all take it away because I could go on about this one. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's just their philosophy, right? They believe in defense and running the ball, and that's what's got gotten them a lot of success up until this point. Mm-hmm. But look, it's a new NFL, all right? We have a quarterback like we've never seen before in this city, all right? So I think it's one of those things where they're 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 struggling to catch up with today's NFL and today's offense and what's needed to be done on that side of the ball. Uh, part of me kind of thinks that DaCosta does understand that, but it's but you know you got Harbaugh there and and while you're winning, you don't really want to change much. But I feel like he kind of wants to go in that direction. But as long as as you're winning the way you're winning, you don't want to change too much. But you can only keep it up for so long. Like you said, you got contracts that need to be paid out pretty soon. You got some hard decisions that need to be made. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, your two ideas don't match up, you know, something's got to give. Yeah. And uh, oh, real quick, just to uh, to piggyback off of what you were saying, I do got to give Eric DeCosta and them that credit because they have tried. Um, mm-hmm. They tried for DeAndre Hopkins, obviously didn't go through. They tried for Adam Thielen. That obviously fell apart, too. So they've tried, but they haven't succeeded yet well, well I'll, I'll say this they always try on offense all right mm. defense, they get, defense it they get it done yeah. defense they get it done mm. and if, if they try and they don't succeed they'll circle back around to do it again mm. all right just like oh, just like with yank and gakwe so yeah try on offense isn't good enough at this point like you have to start making things happen 
Yeah, and <laughs> I mean, they, I, I'm not sure they actually, how hard they actually tried to begin with, but that, that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> you guys are right in that they are incredibly cheap when it comes to wide receivers. Uh, you know, they like to pay their their secondary, they like to pay their O line. They don't pay wide receivers. They don't believe for whatever reason that you need wide receivers to win. Uh, I do understand where uh, Manuel is coming from uh, in terms of the cap. And I think that they always appear to have no money. And the reason for that is Baltimore always invests in veterans. They always invest in guys who are over 30, who aren't going to be taking you know, a veteran, vet minimum contract. Right. And when you do that, when you're constantly paying guys who you know aren't maybe difference makers, uh, it eats up the cap real quick. It doesn't. It doesn't yeah. seem like it, but this is the same kind of thing that that happened with uh, with the Panthers. You know, you're paying. You're not paying anybody twenty million, right? But you're paying three guys six million, and yeah. and you know, when it comes out, it's pretty much the same thing. You don't have any money left over now. <laughs> the cap is not real. They could work around that if they wanted to, but that's just yeah. not the way that Baltimore does things. I don't know if they have a, a uh, dedicated cap person or maybe they do and they're just not very good at their job or whatever it is. But I know that I just watched uh, the Chiefs re-sign four or five guys when they had, you know, this past off season. They, they went they, crazy. Yeah, they yeah. re-signed like, they, they signed Pat Mahomes. They re-signed, uh, I believe it was Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. And at the beginning of that, they had about a hundred dollars in cap room. Not mm -hmm. not a hundred thousand, a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then they came back again yeah. this offseason. They signed Joe Thune. They signed Kyle Long. You know, they they always find ways to get it done. I know the Saints were 90 million over the cap room. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, listen, the cap's not real, but you know, something's got to give at some point, right? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Mike Thomas is available. Make the call. Mike Thomas wasn't available. <laughs> they didn't give up anything. And, they, and gave, the Saints, they opened up cap room by giving somebody a hundred and forty million dollar extension. Like man. And, and the thing with the Saints is, man, this is something that they've been doing back since Jarius Bird. Remember that guy, yeah. uh, the, the safety, right? <laughs> like, he got that huge contract because the the Ravens were trying to get him. I remember that. And I was like, okay, they got Jarius Bird, man. They're not going to have any more money to do anything for a couple years. And every year they find the money. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about this is like a decade ago, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah every year since then, yeah. they just kick that can down the road, and they've always put out a competitive team. So the cap, the cap is set, is is there to keep players' salaries down. It's not there to prohibit teams from from building a winning team if they want to. Ooh, the that cap is cap. Deflect. Yeah, bingo. And cap is cap. It's to keep player salaries down and to deflect blame from owners. Because yeah. you can't say, hey, man, you know, Steve Bashadi, why don't you open up the checkbook, you know, and go sign Kenny Galladay? Because, hey, you know, no cap room, right? right. It's not that he won he doesn't want to spend the money. It's that he can't spend the money. But, you know, it, and you see, it's not the case in, like, baseball and soccer. You know, there's no cap. And mm -hmm. the owners take heat. The owners take heat for not opening up their, 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 uh, their checkbook and getting talent on the team. Yeah. And they don't want that in the NFL. The next question came from my guy, William J. Uh, the title is, I just want to add to Sammy Watkins' comments. And, of course, Sammy Watkins, he talked about how Ravens wide receivers, they weren't getting open. And he said that people can blame the offensive coordinator all they want, but it's up to the receivers uh, to catch that ball. Anyway, he said not only were the Ravens wide receivers not getting separation, but those heart-wrenching, drive-killing drops were slap in the face as well, especially considering the Ravens don't throw as much as we've said Time and time again, some of those games that we lost were really probably lost because of drive-killing drops and failed catching in critical situations. Maybe Sammy Watkins, Coach Williams, and Coach Martin can help show up some unfocused and butterfingers during the season um, and, and preseason and bring the Ravens back to being on top of the food chain. LOL, what do you think? I'd like to hear it. B.S., shout-out to you and yours, fam. I'm out. So, um... I mean, with Sammy Watkins, with his comments, they were like, ah, it was tough because, yeah, the Ravens receivers, a lot of times they didn't get open. Sometimes they were, sometimes they weren't. But with Sammy Watkins' comments, it comes from somebody who obviously has experience uh, winning everything, which is a Super Bowl, and he had experience losing everything too. Uh, but I just mm, – he's really going to have to prove himself, man. Yeah. He, he's really going to because he put a lot of pressure on himself by coming out and saying what he said. It, well, I don't think it was a diss to the uh, to the Ravens receivers at all, because I, I don't think he would want to come on the team and alienate himself from everybody, anything like that. Um, but I, I certainly think that with him saying what he said and just really 
defending the scheme and whatnot. Um, it does help try to push him, push him up that much more. Like, hey, oh, Sammy Watkins was defending me if I'm Greg Roman. I'm like, okay, I love you, man. We worked together before we had success before. Oh, yeah, yeah you, you're gonna be my guy. I got you. Um, but it, it with his health history, especially recent, well, I can't even just his entire career, except for yeah. his first first season. He ah, it's like he, he can't get hurt, he can't miss time, he can't do any of that because that is it's, it's people don't forget like right. comments like these and stuff like this. People don't forget because if, if anything happens, which we all hope it doesn't, but if anything happens where he misses time or he has drops or he's not getting open, they're gonna circle right back around to this, this, yeah. this these comments and whatnot. So hopefully Sammy can just deliver though. I love the confidence, though, man, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what we need from the wide receiver position. We need guys that feel like they're the alpha dogs, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. you guys weren't doing it right. Let me show you how it's done. Like, that's exactly all I want out there. Now, yes, he needs to back it up. He needs to stay healthy. And, um, yeah, uh, ho hopefully he can do it, right? But as far as his comments, um, yeah, players do need to get open, but it's the coach's job to show them how to do it, right? If you're going to say it's all on the players, not the coach, then what's the coach's job? You know what I mean? So uh, it's 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 a little bit of both. Yes, uh, players got to be able to get it done. And if they can't get it done, you got to replace them. You got to get better talent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, v. Yeah, you know, I, I like, like you said, I like the confidence, but it's just funny to me because this is kind of exactly what Hollywood was saying last year. You know, you got yeah. your soldiers, why don't you use them kind of thing. And then he went out and started dropping passes and man, you know, the Ravens flock did not like that. Uh, but with Sammy, yeah. With, with, with Sammy, I think it, it's it's funny to me that he's kind of defending the uh, Greg Roman. You know, yeah, they worked together before, and he had his best season under Greg Roman. Yep. But he had to come out publicly and say, throw me the ball before that happened. You know, True. early on in that season, he was averaging, I believe, it's like 35, 36 yards a game, something like that, in the first half of that season. And then he was like, listen, you know, I'm the man, throw me the ball. And they started yeah. throwing him the ball, and he blew up. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess that's your guy and, you know, you want to come in and, and, you know, you've heard everybody talking about fire G-Row and all that. Right. But it's just funny to me that, you know, <laughs> this is what the Ravens receivers were saying. And you're coming in and you're saying, no, 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 that's not true. But that's exactly what you said to get that, that, that yeah, big yeah. season with Greg Roman. Wow, I, I did not know that, man. Uh, yeah, he he uh, he missed a few games. Or I mean, like he always does, he missed a few games early in that year. But then you know they weren't throwing him the ball, and you know they drafted him number four overall. Right. And he's like, you know, throw me the ball. I'm the I'm a number one receiver. Throw me the ball. And you know they started throwing him the ball, and he was killing people. Yeah, mm. yeah. Watkins is he is that talented. Like, I mean, there is a chance that he could gain some of that back. He's only 27 years old. So, yeah, that's so um, weird, man. Yeah, yeah. It seems like he's been playing forever. Yes. But it, it's just, you know, he just stays hurt, man. If he can stay healthy, there is there is an opportunity that we could get a steal there. But then that begs the question, what do we do then? Because we only got him for one year. So if he has a big year, are we signing him to a long-term deal? You know, or, you know, are we going to let him walk because he's asking for too much? Like, you know, that's that's that's, that's, an, that's another thing. But, yeah, it, it, I, I hope he balls out, balls out obviously. But, yeah. We got we got to see what, what happens with that. Next question came from my boy Max. Uh, he said, hey, Engraven, I'm Max from the UK. I've been watching the videos for the last few months and have really been enjoying hearing your takes. Appreciate it, Max. Uh, he said, my question is, do you see the Ravens trading a late round, a conditional round pick for a younger, more unproven rotational one year rental at pass rusher that can compete in camp for a roster spot similar to what they did with Josh Oliver for the tight end position? Thanks. Oh, man. You know, I forget about the Josh Oliver move. I forget about that all the time. The 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 uh yeah. the tight end that they traded uh from the Jaguars. Jaguars, yeah. Um I for for a pass rusher, I I don't see them doing that. Um because right now you still have who oh, you have Clowney, you have uh Ingram, you have uh Justin Houston, you got Kerrigan. Um so you you got some guys that are out there uh that you could sign. Now they would definitely be a lot uh, more expensive than a unproven guy, a young guy. But you also still have a uh, Chauncey Rivers who was on a practice squad last year, and you're gonna have and some a bunch of undrafted rookie free agents as well. So you're gonna have options if for 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 what they could possibly do for the scenario that you explained. 
um, for a younger, more unproven rotational one-year rental. If they do decide to go that route, I don't think they will, but if they wanted to, they got plenty of options. Yeah, I mean, why would they spend a late-round pick on somebody when they can just draft that person? You, you know what I mean? Like, why, why would they Why would they trade that pick for, for somebody that's not really proven when you can just, you know, I'm sure they have their list. Everybody has their list of, of players, and, you know, they can look at guys that they can draft later on or, you know, even pick up after the draft. So, no, nah, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah uh, I think, you know, the Ravens' MO is kind of just let's go with the the – declining veterans who you know let's pay for some past production you know that they're bringing in justin houston for a visit i'm sure they'll talk to ryan care again uh, like you said Clowney or ingram i don't think that they're going to want to try to trust uh that position to to you know really young players or unproven players um they spent a lot of draft picks a lot of second day draft picks on edge rushers and they didn't really pan out, and I think they're going to go back the other way and just say, hey, let's go and get somebody who we've seen perform in the NFL. Our next question came from my boy uh, Nicholas K. He said, hey, Engraven, I don't know if the question already came up in some of the questions from subscriber videos, but what do you think of the prediction that the Ravens could draft LSU wide receiver Terrace Marshall Jr. with the 27th pick in the draft? I think he will be a very good pick because he is a big physical wide receiver who goes up for the 50-50 balls. Also, because of his physical abilities, he could be a very good run blocker. So I think he would be a perfect fit for the Baltimore Ravens. Hope you have a good day and stay healthy. So Terrace Marshall Jr., LSU. How would y'all feel about that? Well, look, uh, okay, B, you go, you go first. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, just personally, I'm not as high on Terrace Marshall as I am, or as other people are. Uh, mm -hmm. For Baltimore, I would – try to go with Bateman or Kadarius Tony if one of them were there. I think those are the two guys who would really uh, be able to contribute day one. Uh, but I know a lot of people like Terrace Marshall. Uh, I saw Jose laughing there. I, I'm assuming that when you, when you said he's a big receiver, Jose was thinking yeah. uh, size is not a skill, as uh, Emory Hunt likes to say. Oh, yes. um, I want to say this. I, you know, I don't care if he can block, like honestly. I mean, it's yeah, not his no. job. You know, if no. he can, great. Uh, but if not, his job is to go out and get open and catch the ball. You know, that, that's what he was saying. Uh, you know, he, he had some comments recently about how he wants to go to a team that passes the ball where he can, you know, make plays, right? He's not a blocker. So I don't, I don't care if any of these guys can block. Like I said, that, that's just an added bonus. Yeah. Terrace Marshall specifically, I mean, if you take the, uh, the more positive view of him, yeah, he, he's a super athletic guy. Uh, he can get downfield. He's, he's pretty physical. So yeah, I mean, he would be a good pick. Uh, he's just not my favorite personally. Yeah, I mean, I like Terrence Marshall. I'll, I'll be fine with it. He's not my favorite either. But if that's who we end up getting, I'm cool with that. But yeah, I, I was laughing at that, you know, because big, you know, big body get 50 50 balls. Those aren't one and the same. Like just because you're a big body doesn't mean you have a big catch radius or you're going to get those 50 50 balls. And yes, shout out to Emory Hunt from Football Game Plan. He does say that all the time. Size is not a skill. And I totally agree with that. And I mean, we had Steve Smith, who was the opposite of big body, right? But he would get those 50-50 balls. Um, but Terrace Marshall, I do like uh, his potential. You know, there's some other guys that I like better. But yeah, I, I, if we end up with him, I'm, I'm cool with it. And, and just to point out again, like nobody had bigger body wide receivers in Carolina when they drafted Kelvin Benjamin and Devin Funches. And that didn't work. So. <laughs>